That's what I like to hear. Title on, on the go for the audio. Uh, Jose Lopez, I'm the art director of the characters. Uh, I am Mike Vogel, I am VP of development for Hasbro Studios. And, and can you go the around the way? H E U C K. Just think of Floyd. We'll get it eventually. D U Boy. Anyway, that's the co director. Dwayne Capizzi, that's Dwayne with a U, C A P I Z Z I. I'm a supervising producer and uh, head writer. I'm uh, Jeffrey Harris, FormulaMania.com and TuneZone.net staff writer. Jack Hurwitz with uh, TFormers.com. Steve Hang with TFormers.com. Tiffany Wong with Allspark.com. Allspark. Oh, uh, wow. Mike, when can we expect uh, season two of Transformers Prime to come around? After season one. <laughs> uh, like good answer. Um, is it good? Is that the official hub answer? This fall after season four. Yes. Okay. She was, over. she was all over it. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah the, hub, the, hub is, the hub does all the programming, so we deliver them the shows and they figure out when the best time is to uh, get the shows out there. But they are, they are awesome programmers. Okay. So um, you're in development for the, for the hub, so how about seeing a new series of masks? Come on. Um, Hasbro Studios does have a lot of awesome brands, and actually out of all of the 80s brands, Mask is one of the few 80s shows that has not been reimagined yet, so I... You would love to... I, I would, oh, please, I'm a geek. I would love to do it. Um, I would love it. Uh, it's, it's, there's a bunch of brands that we're looking at as we look forward to the next like two or three years uh, of what we're going to be doing um, at Hasbro Studios with the hub. This is now the Mask is something that comes up a lot because there are a lot of geek fans at Hasbro as well. Yeah, they're, they're, the old series is being about to be released by Shout Factory yep. soon, so, you know, give us a new Mask series. Do so, it. Do it. Yeah. You, say, you say yes? Well, if, if Jose said yes. See? He agrees. There you go. <laughs> Stay after work and do it. Yeah, exactly. As Jeff said, everyone likes working for free, so... <laughs> I love Jim Carrey for a while. Not that. <laughs> 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 What you got? What you got? Um, <laughs> they they took everything out. Um, <laughs> I think that probably they're draining. They take. They take. Jose, they take. Who's like um, like your favorite character you've got to design or work on? I have to say, uh, probably Soundwave. I mean, is it one of the most scary? Trauma. 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 Uh, design so, because he took yeah. a lot of liberties. Um, everything starts from doing awesome writing. So the direction that the character is going is always not a very different. Obviously, he can't be a boombox. Uh, he can't what? I'm sorry. Be a boombox. Boombox. Yeah, it would have to be like an iPod or something, you know, with so no cassette. Uh, Times have changed. Yeah. You know, when we design the characters, we look at. You know, we, we look at the most iconic elements of every character. We pick those elements and we change everything else. So, um, obviously, the personality of the character will dictate a lot of what the shapes and the design is going to be like. It's a big part. The vehicle mode is a big part of what we're going to do. So, you know, once we've decided what type of vehicle he's going to be, then. Yeah. But I think, uh, to me, it's designing sound was a lot of fun. Designing. RC was a lot of fun. I like, the, I like the girls in the show. I love his RC. Yeah. Who yeah. comes first? Yeah. Is, is the, the writing that's first or the... The writing always comes first. So you'll work off of the script? It, 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 it's not, a, not necessarily a script, but a description of what the character is. Yeah, when we yeah. decide, uh, you know, you, we decide that we're going to, or you guys decide and tell us that, uh, you know, we want to put so-and-so in the show, and Hasbro goes, awesome, we're going to do so-and-so. Even before these guys have written out the whole script, Knowing that we're going to do that, they'll, these guys will all sit in a room and, you know, yeah. what's this character going to be like, what's the personality, we'll do this, we'll do that, and then... And something we'll be starting to do also, Bran will buy a guide of, you know, the elements that they will need with the character. So what things that, you know, we might not be aware that are important elements within the design, that they're important to them, important to the fans. Well, like Wheeljack. 
Yeah, that was one of the first. We, we early on when you know, like 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 Jeff said, early days when we were hardly a studio and we were building it up. You know, you're you're working with Rhode Island and you're trying to figure out well. We're, we're designing this stuff, and we're figuring out, but you don't want to design something and then send it to Rhode Island to look at and have them go, you totally forgot this, or you didn't do this. So we got them to send us these kind of one-page sort of art inspiration things that were, where they'd be like, here's the things about this character that are important. So like for Wheeljack, it was like the mask and the... Yeah. Head the fans. Yeah, the head fans. But so, you know, we'll check this, this I think it's the, the, the one design that we kept the most true to the G1 version. And yeah. I think it was... But if, well, some are less. Like with Arachnid, they kind of were like, go to town. Like, yeah, it, it just depends. I mean, some of the earlier versions are just too outdated. And they wanted a fresh take on them. And like I said, it's the personality of the character, the direction of the story, what kind of things the character wants to do. And the vehicle. Uh, Jose, when we first see uh, Skyquake in robot form, was his first design a bit of a key? Because it looked like, before he, before he did the scan of the head, it looked like his robot body was already in the form of what? Like a, a robot transformation. <laughs> if I could ask, we sort of have like sort of a reasoning behind it, but, but you know, absolutely it was because of the CG limitations. Right, right, right. But, we're, but our reasoning is sort of, you know, when they were on Cybertron, they did have their Cybertronian vehicle forms. So our thinking is uh, their choice of what Earth vehicle they're going to be usually parallels what they were back on Cybertron. So that, that, that's our thinking. Yeah. Well, like when you look at like, even when you look at like, War for Cybertron the game, right. for the most part, the jets were like cool Cybertronian jets, the vehicle, the car, right. cool Cybertronian cars. So, Dwayne's right. Absolutely, it's because of the limitations of CG, because you want, you don't want to build a build that you're going to use for 20 minutes of an episode and then build another build. But, um, well, yeah, it kind of makes sense. But, you know, we try when we design these characters like World Jack, for example, or uh, Skyquake, I... You know, even Wheeljack, like, we try to hide the wheels on the shoulders and try to give them a fancier looking rim so it doesn't look like it. it looks a little bit more alien. Same thing with Skyquake, we try to break the parts a little bit more so it doesn't, you know, oh, that's, you can sort of tell that it's a jet, but it could be anything else. So physical Wheeljack didn't inspire you to, to call Wheeljack? <laughs> <laughs> Mike, I don't know if you can clarify this at all. There have been a lot of debates. Is is this series a continuation of the War for Cybertron video game, or is it just sort of just another chapter of the Transformers pantheon? Um, how, how could it be a continuation if it, if it uh, if War for Cybertron ends like eons before a series begins? Well, because we do leave <laughs> Cybertron and go to Earth. Um, I, I think that you know the rule that the rule that we kind of go by is. We, we're not, we're, we, don't, we don't go out to contradict anything. And we want it to be something so that if you're as a Transformers fan, you want to have that continuous experience. It works about 85% makes sense. And that those little things that pop up, like a different name here, or a different thing here, your vehicle form didn't, or you know, a, a thing that happened in the game, and we referenced something that happened on Cybertron and it wasn't quite a match. We all discussed the fact that there's going to be those little things that as we, as we continue to build the big continuity, um, that don't quite match, but in the, broad, in the broadest strokes, yes, we are trying to create a giant continuity for Transformers, but if these guys come up with something that's great for story, and it doesn't quite match, we're always going to err on what makes the best story. I just think that like a Transformers multiverse, yeah. a Transformers multiverse where everything counts, all of it counts. Well, I like that. Yeah. But you know, it's, and I didn't. Uh, if it's my response sounded snarky, it wasn't. But I mean, my, my continuation is obviously Transformers Prime is not a direct sequel because a lot has happened in between. So I mean, I, I may have said this about Prime. To me, for those who are getting caught up in the continuity and, and things don't quite look up, to, to me, I think the best way to uh, enjoy just sort of let yourself go is think of more for Cybertron, you know, and Exodus, and you know, the lore and. As, as ancient history, you know, this is stuff that happened a long, long time ago that sort of informs, you know, the current events, you know. And, and I think, you know, we, you know, again, trying to let our series operate on a couple of different levels, you know, we didn't want to alienate new seven-year-olds coming to the property with too much backstory, uh, you know, from a man. But yet, our characters, our Autobot characters, are clearly characters who have been through a war 
continue to be fighting a war, have been at it for centuries. There, there's a sense of, of uh, war weariness, you know, to the characters, and, and, and I think they, they clearly carry that burden as characters in the series. So, so the the, uh, the, the reference points are, are there. Does that mean you haven't played War for Cybertron? Yet? <laughs> I've, uh, I mean, have you played, you haven't played it? Have you? I, I have not played it. I watched, I watched all the cinemas. Yeah. They were awesome. Yeah, you can, I think you can just go on YouTube and just yeah, watch, all, watch all, all the cinematics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. One after the other. Someone actually edited like the actual in-game in -game sort of uh, play into sort of a movie yeah. along well, with the cinematics. Well, well, people, well, what people really don't know is that actually Arkham Asylum and Arkham City and Transformers Prime are in the same continuity. <laughs> so that's the that's the big spoiler. Wow. I just, yeah. I had a feeling. <laughs> so the little teaser at the end. Who, what, who inspired that big head that spoke to us? <laughs> yeah. I do have a big head. <laughs> I was just trying to see if I can get something out of you. Was um, that the fall? <laughs> Unicron? I, I can either, uh, I can either confirm. La it's, it's a, it's a. Uh, what does he transform into? You, know? you can just tell us that. <laughs> that, we, that actually, I can't say. <laughs> um, you will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be. Yeah, it's, it's 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 something. I, I can't, mean, I can't wait to see. I can't like, wait to see the toy. Yeah, we're we're like leader size Voyager. Yeah, but but no, we we we, we, we wanted to tease it and, and we, we we gotta leave it at that because it, it would be too. Big okay, yeah, we, I, I was just trying to get a little bit more. There's, there's a lot of there's a lot of discussion because. Of, of should we of should we tease that or not? Yes. I'm sure some of us would. So if it did, it's a phase to some research. Dwayne, when does, when does um, Silas enter into frenemy territory? Because that's definitely where he's heading, right? Oh, is that what you think, huh? <laughs> I, I want to call Silas a frenemy, but it doesn't seem he's quite there yet. What, what makes you think it's going that way? I don't know. Yes, uh... Because a character like that, at some point, will be frenemy... Uh, in frenemy territory. Wait, are you thinking a frenemy to Megatron or a frenemy to Optimus? That, well, we don't know. Oh, okay, okay. He could be a frenemy to the Decepticons or a frenemy to the Autobots. Well, you know, we, we are... I'm just, I just want him to be frenemy. We, we, we are playing a lot of frenemy stuff. And uh, <laughs> they're, they're, I mean, to say anything more about Silas, it's, it's actually a uh, arc that pays off uh, devastatingly in, in Season 2. I think uh, but, uh, it's safe to say that Silas gets closer to some of the characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. Uh, Vincent, so I wanted to get to you. What's, what's the toughest part of your of your job working? It's having a script, and then reading it, and then well, yeah, and going holy shit! Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, holy shit! <laughs> make this come to life in a sense. I mean, it's I'm just part of the process of what I meet with my board artists and you know, we come up with shot ideas together. But yeah, it's just and it's just having those, you know, you have this big pile of what used to be stored for paper, but now it's all done digitally. And that you just have to make that and the model sheets and then realize it visually, you know, <laughs> that's a challenge. Yeah, one of the things that, I mean, just a pro like shout out to all these guys is that when you work in animation, most of the time, and it, it, it's always good, but like you read a script and your imagination runs wild. And then you see the animatic and you're like, wow, this is going to be great. And then it goes through the process, and by the time the animation gets comes back, it's always awesome, but your brain, like the way you imagined it, was always like so much bigger and more epic. And I can safely say that this show just goes beyond what I even pictured. Like I read this, I'm like, this will be really good. And I've worked in animation, so I know how this will end up looking. And just because of the way that these guys uh, and Dave have decided to go so cinematic and the level at which Dwayne, Dwayne all the writers are working and just the designs and everything, I, I almost know episode has come back where I wasn't like, that looks better than I even pictured it. Um, Vincent, I, th I think one of the benefits we see before a series like this is that it can definitely sort of um, enhance you know, the direction and sort of the camera angles you can take and you can make it the animation a little more dynamic, the camera can be more kinetic, right. can move a little bit. It's, it's I think like thinking this, more in terms of live action. Right. So. Oh, if you agree with that, like, I mean, I think in the last episode we saw, like, the scene with uh, Miko and the cave with Volcat, it was just really intense, you know, really intense and really good close-ups and also very close, had a, it felt very claustrophobic, which you might not really get as much in a traditionally animated show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And really, too, if you notice, it's, it's, again, it's about not overusing what we have as far as being able to move the camera and just making sure that those that the camera is just on those characters and it's letting those dramatic scenes play. You know? But then when we want to do a big 360, as long as the set is built in 360, you know, and that's another thing, it's all, that's almost like working with live action. You have these sets, sometimes the sets are just three quarters built and you can only do a couple different angles and, you know, sometimes you can do it 360, but, but in the background it's just matte paintings. It's, it's very fascinating. So, how, so how does the process work? You start with a description, then you get a design, and then do you take all yeah, of that and, and pull and it together? I, I, I sit in with the voice before, with Dwayne and, and the voice director, which they pretty much run, and I just, if I have any little thing to, to contribute, I do. But for, for the most part, I just take the audio and his, Jose's designs and the script, and then I sit with um, my board team. I have three board artists, and they, we divide up the script and discuss how are we going to do this. <laughs> and are you also the liaison between the folks in Japan, making sure that they're uh, no, no, at that point? We, like the, the goes to the board, they have to come back and revise it. You know, Dwayne gets his chance to weigh in and make sure everything's working well, and, and then uh, it gets assembled into an animatic, which is you know, something you can watch on a computer where all plays. You know, with the, the voice record and the timing um, network. That stuff you guys do in house before yeah, you ship yeah, it. Yeah, network, goes to network and <coughs> yeah. Vogel. And these guys get a chance to see it and make sure it's what they want and, and weigh in. And then they're our, they're our first yeah. audience. Right, right. Yeah. And, and of course, Dave Martin. Martin you know, finished material right. with Polygon. We get dailies. Uh, we get to see rough animation. Yeah. Animation that is not lit, you know. Yeah, there's stuff, different stages. Different stages in the process, but that, all that material goes through the department and it goes to the other three supervisors, Ms. Toyama, who takes care of all the, the sense of the show and the stuff. So, it does um, all the color stuff and then the characters. So, but that, the process with, in terms of getting the, the finished animation, we, the three of us, and they take care of And when you're working on an episode, is it intensive? You do an episode? And and it gets finished, and then you move on to the next one. Okay. The way the way animation works, uh, it's, yeah. You, if you look at the animation schedule, it's not like one episode, one episode, one episode. It's one episode, two episodes, three episodes, four episodes, five episodes. So when you're in the middle of the season, you are literally working on like all of these shows at the same time because you need to, in order to afford to do animation, you need to get this one out the door, and then a couple weeks later. So you go through this whole like the beginning stage is kind of slow ramping up. Then you're in the thick of it for like weeks and weeks and weeks, and then it sort of like dies down again, and then animation starts coming back, and it all starts over. Yeah, I'm directing like three episodes right now. Uh, so, Dwayne, uh, how far are you into season two right now, and uh, Vincent, how much of it is finished? Uh, we are uh, actually uh, just heading into the final scripts of season two. We're, we're, we're uh, writing the finale as, as we speak. So uh, season two is all figured out. Uh, season three, we know where we want to go. Uh, if there is a season three, hopefully. Uh, no, there's gonna, you guys got to break the record of three Transformers seasons per cartoon. <laughs> yeah. so. It's like a pattern. It really is right now. I'm, I'm hoping so. I think. Uh, I, I think we're feeling pretty strong. So. We're feeling yeah. strong about it, and you know Hasbro. Season two will take us through how many episodes? Well, Twenty-six. Uh, we, we are producing twenty-six episodes yeah. right now. Yeah. yeah. For, for we've been told there's second group of twenty-six. Possibly be a hundred in all. Is that correct? Uh, <laughs> I, that would be uh, awesome. But that's yeah, that's we, the long term. We, we hope. We hope. But uh, you know, I mean, I think that. Yeah, we're, we're working really closely with Hasbro, we're working really closely with The Hub, and everybody is 100% supportive of Prime, so as long as the fans keep coming out, uh, I, you know, knock on wood, we are happy to keep doing as much Transformers Prime as possible, because we're all loving the show. So, so Vincent, have, have you guys completed Season 1, and are you already doing oh, it? Oh, yeah, we're well in Season 2, season two yeah. We're looking at uh, number 14 next week, aren't we? Books for this? Yeah, so... Is it true Jeffrey Combs doesn't come to the recording sessions in pants? And if that's true, what does he wear? <laughs> <laughs> that came up at BotCon. Did it? Did it? it had came yes, it did. Bacon. Jeffrey Combs does wear pants. However, uh, I worked with Peter Stormer on Batman vs. Dracula, and his pants were making so much noise because uh, he had like vinyl workout pants on. And when we mentioned it to him with a big smile on his face, the next thing we knew, those pants were flying off. So uh, that's, that's, real pro. That, that's, that's my no pants story. <laughs> The, the live cast reading at BotCom was spectacular, so, I mean, d getting those actors together, does it ever become R-rated? 
Just Kevin Michael Richardson. Yeah, just Kevin Michael Richardson. I think I don't think there's I don't think I've ever been at a voice record for any animated series that did not become R-rated at some point. Yeah. You know, you put a bunch of people who are extremely talented actors in a room for several hours and have them doing these lines over and over and working these scenes. At some point, somebody breaks, and once somebody breaks, it just goes downhill from there. And it's always Kevin Michael. Richardson. And it's always Kevin Michael Richardson. <laughs> No, I feel sorry for you guys. There's quite literally thousands of characters, and um, I, and you've probably heard this a little already. I was a little surprised to see an obscure character like Skyquake brought about as an evil guy. Um, how do you guys decide who you're going to bring up as either a cameo in a show or a nemesis or someone obviously to keep things out of balance? But like I said, it's, it's a two-way street. In some cases, it was wish list, whether it was my global wish list, whether it was brand wish list, whether it was just you know a notion of it's a fan favorite, we've got to bring he or she to the show. Uh, in some cases, it was the other way around, where we had an idea for a character, and you know, we, Wheeljack was, was a case in point. You know, Wheeljack, we had this idea of like the, the lone wolf. Uh, uh, character, you know, very grizzled, you know, wrecker, uh, old buddy of all kids, and we were like, but we're not sure who, who this should be, and uh, Brand, uh, you know, came came back to us and said, you know what, Wheeljack would be a good one for that. I'm like, okay, Wheeljack. Which is an interesting choice for that. Yeah. I mean, it's very, it's very different in some ways, but yeah, he's, we, again, it's all story-based, it's all character-driven and story-based, so sometimes there will be, you know what would be awesome to bring so-and-so in, and then these guys kind of go in and and say, you know what, we think we can put a really good story around this, and we say, okay, awesome. And sometimes they like with a, you know, like knockout, breakdown, or some others, like, we know we want to do this type of character, and then you bring it in, and it's actually, it worked pretty well so far. Yeah. And, and I, I also want to add that, uh, you know, whenever we do bring in a character, there's always a reason, and, and it almost always shakes up, you know, either uh, the, the dynamic with um, one team or another, or uh, yeah. is sort of a game changer in, in, in the uh, unfolding saga. And so, you know, there were requests, you got to bring in so-and-so. I wish I could say so-and-so, I'm not like, yeah, no. You nah. can't say, you can't say those so and so But, but there, there, was, there was one where, you know, they kept on coming at us for, for, for a character, it was a Decepticon, and we were like, yeah, no, we don't know where to put them right now. It's not working. No, no, no. And then one day I went, okay, we're ready, and you're going to love it, because we came up with the perfect reason to bring in this character. It's like, there's always got to be a reason, so I think when these characters do show up, it's like, yeah, yeah you know, but we, we never want to do it uh, gratuitously just to bring it, bring it in. So, uh, and again, you know, uh, practical limitations. We only have X number of CG builds that were allowed, and sometimes we need to negotiate real hard, you know, for, the, for those builds, and, and, uh, uh, and sometimes we turn around and kill them off. But, uh, but you know, I will say this, uh, I, I can't tease this, even though Skyquake is dead, uh, his, his death will loom large uh, in season two and, and, and uh, create uh, repercussions uh, for a lot of the characters. So. Okay. I was like, I was like, we're in. Uh, oh, okay. How that for a tease? Yeah. Jose, so you get to design the props and weapons, are there any famous, uh, Sort of artifacts in the Transformers mythos you've gotten to take a crack at design wise, like the All Spark Cube or the Matrix of Leadership. I, mean, yeah. I think the biggest one would be we... robots. That's, that's coming. Oh. You can't say anything. Oh. Oh. I know. Does your just come out? Nope, no, 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 no. Oh. We, we curved it. We curved it. The a couple more questions, guys. Then we're going to wrap up. Okay. How does um, so, you so you have Jose? Jose gets to do some really cool stuff with some things that exist in Transformers lore. Okay. How does uh, June's character affect the dynamics now that she's introduced to the, all the robots and stuff? Is she gonna like set up shop and clean house for them while they're out fighting the Decepticons and stuff? You know, uh, I mean, to be honest, we we, we uh, tackled it head on because we needed to in crisscross and metal attraction. And then, you know, as with many things, uh, we sort of, uh, you know, put that to bed. You know, it's like, okay, we've done it, we've dealt with it, and uh, she will come and go, but, but she is she's not a permanent part of the base by, by any stretch. I, I think, you know, in some ways that would take some of the fun out of it, like, like oh, mom's hanging around. Yeah. And, and, and that's what's great is you, that's exactly what you did in the episode. Like, Mom, I'm gone. Mom, she was there. The was like, Miko's like, this isn't fun. Mom's hanging around. Yeah. I, I was that was a great episode. Like when they like when they pitched the idea of that story, it was really exciting because usually you're so used to having to keep things status quo in a show like this, so you get to oh June found out how are they going to wipe her memory or she's going to hit her head or she's going to do this. You're like no, she actually 
finds out. Mm-hmm. Well, and actually twofold. I think normally the way you would do that story, uh, although the, the Michael Bay sort of uh, changed that precedent where, where the parents are brought into the fold uh, very quickly yeah. uh, in Transformers 1, uh, but you know, typically in a series, you know, you wouldn't. You, you would dodge that, and the parents would never find out. You would keep on playing French farce, and we said, okay, let's set up the episode in, in this way where, you know, you, 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 we wanted the audience to feel like, oh, by the end, you know, she was going to miss it all or, you know, get knocked out. And hopefully it played this way where it was actually a surprise. Like, oh, shoot, she really found out. Oh, now what? So, uh, yes. And, and by the way, I know there's been a lot of talk about uh, June's uh, heels comments. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, I, people really got into it. it, it really, I, I think... You know, with us, there, there's always a level of nuance to it. And I think a level of nuance is, you know, Optimus Prime is sort of the ideal man. You know, he's the guy who never leaves. You know, unlike Dad. You know, and, and so so there is that that layer. But really, it was just a a, uh, a dry bit of humor on her part. You know, she, I mean, she wasn't wearing heels. If you look at the footage, she is not wearing heels. So, so um, Jose, did you design a, a rap after? Um uh, is it Rafi? No, 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 no. Look, Rafi. Oh, I don't know. There he is. Rafi Wade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he was your visual reference for the character, right? Uh, was he? Wasn't, but it was. Somebody we see goes. how you know the resemblance kind of right? He's kind of got your hair too. The one. I think he modeled himself after your character. He liked it so much, he just well, like I mean, went. I think you used to yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we did. We went to different versions of. Uh, I kept making the hair bigger and bigger, and Raffles kept getting bigger and bigger. As we were going into production, and it just, you know, the glasses eventually just kind of, you know, the resemblance grew. The one that was crazy was the design Miko. We finished with Oh, that was crazy. And then, months later, you know, uh, Tanya was casted. Oh, but what's crazy is like, so you designed Miko, Miko design approved, Miko design finished. Yeah, so we do auditions for voices. Months later, we hear a voice, don't see her. Yeah. I have no idea what she looks like, but I go, this voice is Miko. Yeah. Then she walks in, and I'm like, it's Miko, like yeah. pigtails and everything. Yeah. Like she's the ninja Simic girl. Yeah, yeah. Girl. it's so to me. To, you know, I, I knew uh, Rafi when we were designing Raph, and so I can, you know maybe. There was some, some influence there, but Miko was definitely. She actually went out and bought the whole outfit. You know that, right? She has like a Miko outfit, like the boots and everything that she can wear. And when I met her, I was. Just like, okay. Andy, do the same thing. <laughs> so now that, now that you guys are on Prime, and the, you got to be going back toward through the through the lore and stuff. Where where do you really enjoy before Prime? In the lore, G1, Beast Wars. What's the stuff that you read actually, and you're like, oh wow. I, I I actually did not. I was too, I was too old for Beast Wars. I watched it a little bit, but I grew up as a G1 kid. Like I was full on G1. Like I like my dad. My dad took me to the Transformers movie when it came out. Promptly fell asleep and was asleep as I cried and cried and cried that Optimus Prime died. So I was a full on full on G1 kid. So for me, when I get hired to work at Hasbro and it's all of a sudden like, hey, we're gonna do a Transformers. I'm like. This is the best thing ever. <laughs> it is, you know, it is very, very trippy because you grow up with all the, uh, these characters, you know, Tony and Wonder Brothers from Wonder Brothers from Batman. Uh, you know, I mean, this is a very cool aspect of it. And the revamp of characters, you know. When I was a kid, I used to watch it one the time because of the G1 and love it. And then, you know, one day I get a call from Therese and she's like, a new Transformer show, you want to be part of it, and you're very like, oh my god, I'm, you know, I still remember when they were like, I, you know, they said, okay, the job is yours, we'll just do it, okay, so start working on Optimus. It's like, we can't pay you at the moment, yeah. but go ahead and start. <laughs> and so, you, you know, you sit down in your studio, and, and you know, my studio, and you just start sketching, and it's, 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 a, it's a privilege. The old animated movie with the Stan Bush, so. Yeah. You got the judge! He's down there, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, is he? Yeah, yeah I can see it. Because that movie was awesome. Hey, don't your uh, stories will uh, print or, or uh, make it to the web yet by Saturday. But I just wanted to plug uh, Saturday's episode, uh, number 20, Partners. Uh, it's it's, uh, it's uh, 
it's a big one. It's like it's a game changer. It's, uh, but, but you know what's so funny? We're sitting here, you're saying that, and I'm like, Dwayne, you already told them that. And they're like, no, you told the other people. I was like, what? Dwayne's going crazy. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, unfortunately, I'm going to be here. I meant to plug it on the panel, but uh, anyway, it, it's uh, a lot happens and it's really intense, and uh, uh, I think you'll like it. Some good stuff. I won't like, see it until I get home. Is there anything we can do to kind of yep, I have a DVR. sway anyone regarding a new mask TV series? You are you are all about the mask. I love it. It's the one show like we haven't gotten like a new version of like every like we're getting a new Thundercats now, and there's new Voltron on TV. We need new masks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you agree, right? Hey, I agree. Yeah. I'm still waiting for the Pogs movie. The Pogs? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the mockumentaries. Exactly. Thank you guys for coming today. Thank Appreciate you. It.